are you, babe? Say how about a little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro Goldwyn Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcement. <laughs> Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. Of course, that's only the name I use on the stage. I'm half Irish, half Scotch, and the way I keep on believing that I'll make a success in show business, I guess I'm also half nuts. But I'm not complaining. I travel from place to place trying to make an honest buck, and I keep laughing at trouble. And trouble always seems to laugh back. And such a dirty laugh, too. <laughs> Like, for instance, the time I wound up in the thriving little town of Bartonville. I was hitchhiking my way back to Brooklyn. I figured if I wasn't going to eat, I might as well not eat among friends. So, well, I didn't want to stay stranded in Bartonville. So I walked up to an old gent whittling away in front of a tree by the general store. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, mister, but can you tell me when the next train leaves here? Yep. Well, how about telling me? You haven't asked me yet. Oh, pardon me. When does the next train leave for the east? Uh, 9.15. 9.15? July 8th, year after next. Oh, then I guess I'd better hurry or I'll... Year after next? Yep, a railroad company won't put in a spur track off the main line until the town has a population of 2,600, and so far Bartonville only has 2,492. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to take the bus. Ain't no buses out here, neither. No buses, no trains? What do you folks do when you want to leave this town? Talk ourselves out of it. Oh, fine. Stranded in a one-horse town. Uh, look, Missy. Uh... I know. No horse, either. Uh, yeah. Well, mister, since I'm stuck here for a while, any way of earning any money in this town? I wouldn't know. I never tried it. Well, there's no rush, Grandpa. You're young yet. Well, I guess I'll have to stay somewhere until I figure out my next move. Can you tell me where the hotel is? Yeah. Okay, I'm asking. Where's the hotel? Down the street to the corner and then two blocks over. Thanks. Yeah, you won't like it there, I reckon. Why not? It burned down last week. Well, why didn't you say so? You didn't ask me. Oh, sorry, it slipped my mind. Any place else I can get a room in this warmed-over graveyard, Grandpa? Well, you might try Agatha Slumps. Well, frankly, that don't sound like a very tasty dish. Uh, Aggie's a teacher at the high school. She takes in boarders every once in a while. Only lady boarders, mind you. Mm -hmm. Aggie's a spinster lady. You know how it is. No, but I bet it ain't good. Can you tell me where I can find the high school? Yep. It's still down by the river, I think. You think? I ain't been down to check since the tornado. (sighs) I think I'll amble down to the high school and see if I can make a deal with Miss Schlump. So long, Pappy. And don't sit there at the base of the tree too long. You might start to take root. So, since I figured I was destined to have to stay in this American Devil's Island for a while, I I walked down to the Bartonville High School to find the schlump character and ask her to put me up for a spell. On the way to the classrooms, I passed the football field where the team was having practice. 43, 28... 96. Stick to the game, quarterback. <laughs> you too, coach. Oh, uh, pardon me, young man. Yes, what can I... What can I do for you? Well, first wipe the steam off the inside of your glasses and then tell me where I can find Miss Agatha Schlump. Oh, you'll find Prune Face in the history room. Prune Face? Oh, I'm sorry. You're, uh, you're not related to her by any chance. Well, in a way, we're both the same sex. Well, you'd never suspect it. Now, now. That isn't a nice thing to say about a teacher. 
After all, what would the world be like without teachers? Paradise. Especially without a sourpuss like Miss Schlump. Sourpuss? Oh, you, you mean she's just... Wait till you meet her. Mm. She's been even worse than ever lately. Oh, fine. And I wanted to ask if she'd take me in as a boarder. Oh? You expect to live in Bartonville? Yeah, if you call that living. Well, I'll show you where the history room is. Uh, thanks. Oh, oh, by the way, I'm uh, Maisie Revere. Oh, hello. I'm Tommy Johnson. Oh, hello. Here's the history classroom, Miss Revere. I don't know whether Miss Schlump is in there yet. It's still an hour before class begins. Yes, miss. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, I'm looking for the history teacher, sir. Sir! Miss Revere, that's Miss Schlump. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Schlump. But with that manny suit and the way you're wearing your hair... Oh, that's I... quite all right, miss. Perhaps I do dress a little severely, but after all, I'm a school teacher and not a glamour girl. You can say that again. What was that, Tommy? Uh, he said that he may need a pen. Didn't you, Tommy? Uh, yeah. Well, bye now, Miss Revere. Bye. Exactly. What can I do for you, Miss uh, uh, Revere? Maisie Revere. Of course, that's just the name I use on the stage. The stage? Then you act on the stage. <gasps> How awful. Oh, you've seen my act then. <laughs> Well, I, I know it's not very good. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Revere. Forgive me. I I haven't been feeling well lately. Oh, well, then maybe you could use somebody to, well, sort of take care of you and sort of maybe somebody like a boarder, maybe. You want to live in this town? Oh, it's not such a bad town, Miss Schlump. I think it's out of this world, a little too far out. I won't be in your way, though, Schlumpy, unless maybe, um, no, you couldn't be. Couldn't be. What? Uh, thinking of getting married. Married? Oh! Oh, gee, I'm sorry, honey. Don't cry. Here, dry your eyes. Here's a blotter. Married. Oh, but please don't. Marriage is a wonderful institution, and you look like you're ready for one. Oh, I mean, someday somebody will come along and... That's just the trouble. Somebody has come along. He has? Only he hasn't. Say, you haven't been well, have you? You don't understand. Well, maybe you'd better tell me about it. Uh, but have a drink of water first. There's some on the desk. Oh, yeah. Here. Don't you think you'd better take the flowers out first? Oh, sure, sure. Um, there. Thanks. Now, I'm, I'm ready to listen, honey. Oh, I don't want to annoy you with my troubles. Besides, it really doesn't make sense. Well, love ain't supposed to make sense, honey. It's just a disease that science hasn't found a cure for yet. It'll make you feel better to tell somebody about it. Are you in love, honey? Oh, I feel so miserable. So miserable. Oh. I don't think I want to live anymore. You're in love. Now tell me about the fella. Is he handsome? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Well, then what does he look like? I don't know. I've never seen him. Never seen him? Where'd you meet in Pittsburgh? I never met him. You don't know what he looks like. You never met him and still you're in love? Well, it isn't easy to explain. I'll bet it ain't, sister. You see, we both fell in love. Oh, you'll never believe this. I will, honey, if I have to force myself. Well, you see, Roger. Roger St. John to Williger, Taramie. Is his full name? And a fuller name than that I've never heard. He's a professor of history at the Sabois in Paris. Mm-hmm. And he wrote a book, mm -hmm. a wonderful book, called The Tribal Customs of the Ancient Aztecs. Mm. You haven't read it by any chance? No, and I'll never understand how I missed it. Uh, how did you and Roger St. John and so forth fall in love? Well, we didn't at first. Oh. You see, I was so impressed that I wrote Roger, well, you might call it a fan letter. Oh, and he answered, and that's how you both fell in love. We corresponded for months, and mm -hmm. last month, on my 23rd birthday, he proposed. You're, uh, only 23? I know. I look more like I'm 43, don't I? Well, only when you smile, honey. I, mm -hmm. I know what I you mean, mean Miss Sophia. And that's exactly what Roger would think if he ever saw the real me. If? You mean he never saw you either, and he wants to marry you? He wants to marry the beautiful girl I led him to believe I was. Uh-oh. In your letters, you toyed with the truth a little. Mm. I said I had golden hair. Mm. Figure like Lana Turner. 
Complexion like Elizabeth Taylor? Some toying, I'll say. Look, honey, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But when Roger comes here to marry you, well, you don't wear a veil until the ceremony. It won't be a ceremony. He keeps asking when he can come to America and marry me. But I keep putting him off with excuses. All kinds of excuses. Oh, oh don't cry, honey. Maybe if he did come here and saw you, he'd... Well, 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 after all, you have a very smart brain. But a brain is the last thing a man looks for in a woman. Yeah, after he looks for everything else. Oh, come in. Uh, pardon me, Miss Lump, but a cablegram just came for you. They asked me to bring it in. Cablegram? Maisie. Here. Oh, gosh, I'm so nervous. Oh, open it, Maisie. Well, I'm so nervous, too. You open it, Tommy. Okay. Huh. It's from somebody called Roger. Roger? Oh, let me see. Oh, uh, dear. Arriving 11 a.m. today by plane, and we leave right after we get married for France. We'll not listen to any more excuses. This is our wedding day. I love you, Roger. Oh, Maisie, what'll I do? Well, offhand, I say you ain't got enough time to do anything but pack a nightgown and practice blushing. But what will Roger think when he sees me? He, he thinks I'm beautiful. He does. Well, he couldn't... And be... never mind, Tommy. I think Aggie is pretty, if you look for the right thing. You really think so, Maisie? Why, sure, honey. Why, you have very pretty... Very pretty... Yes. Well, this may come as a surprise to you, honey, but I can't remember when I ever saw a girl with such beautiful earlobes. I have nice earlobes? Why, exquisite. That's what they are, just exquisite. Don't you think so, Tommy? I wouldn't know, Miss Revere. I ain't much of an earlobe man. Eh, uh, never mind. And there's possibilities with that complexion, too. And your nose is cute. Say, Schlumpy, is there a decent beauty parlor in this town? I don't know. I've never been to one. Well, Antoine's Donna Main does great work. Uh, Miss Hardwick, the English teacher, always goes there to have her mustache dyed. Um, I mean... Agatha, honey, you're off to Antoine's to get your kisser made kissable. But will there be time? Roger's arriving at 11 and after 10 now. Well, then you'd better hurry. Get a facial, a massage, your eyebrows thin. Yeah, so Roger won't think you're John L. Lewis. Tommy. But suppose it won't work. Suppose Roger doesn't... Well, you know, I, I can't afford to lose my job. Jobs aren't very easy to get. Yeah, so the rumor goes... Maisie. Yeah? Would you? Would I what? Take over my history class for today. Oh, but I don't know anything about what happened hundreds of years ago. I can't even remember what happened yesterday. Say, why can't you just memorize today's lesson? Memorize? Yes, it's right here in the book. It's all about the First Punic War from 264 B.C. to 241 B.C. Uh, you remember studying that in school, don't you? Uh, well, I'm afraid not, honey. You see, I only went as far as the sixth grade, and I must have been playing hooky the day we took up the Punic Wars. Oh. Uh, I guess I'll just have to let Roger see me as I am. I was born to go through life without love. And maybe Roger will find somebody else to marry. Somebody pretty. Tommy. Yeah? Hand me that book. Oh, thanks, Maisie. Thanks, just millions. Well, I'm off. I guess I'm a little bit off, too. Get the works, honey. Here's the book, Miss Revere. And here's today's lesson. There ain't much time. You better start memorizing. Yeah, sure, sure. The First Punic War, 264 to 241 B.C. Mm -hmm. A band of mercenaries who had been dismissed by the town of Syracuse. Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
history teacher. Come to attention class, please. I said come to attention class, please. Shut up! Thank you, gentlemen. I am Miss Revere. Miss Schlump won't be with you this morning. <laughs> well, she's having a few mistakes fixed up so she can pass a very important examination this morning. I will now call the roll. Henry Grunbroid. <whistles> Present. George Mason. <whistles> Present. Percival Langdon. Here, teacher. Hmm. Woman hater. Tony London. Oh, he's not here, teacher. I didn't ask you. If Tony's not here, let him say so himself. Tommy Johnson. Here, Miss Revere. Where? In your chair. You're sitting on me. Oh, I didn't see you. You may go to your seat, Tommy. I'm going to start the history lesson. Sure, sure. Good luck, Miss Revere. Oh, thanks, honey. I mean, thanks. Now, students, as you all know, today's lesson is about the... The First Punic War. Uh, yeah. Well, here goes. A band of mercenaries who had been dismissed by the tyrant of Albany... That's Syracuse. Uh, well, I was close. Took possession of the city of Messana, and from this stronghold harassed the northeast corner of... Um, Sicily. Uh, thanks, dearie. Sicily. The tyrant of Syracuse, King Hero... That's Hiro. Oh, don't be such a show-off. Now, where was I? Uh, King Hiro <laughs> undertook a war. Oh, yeah, yeah. This here king character undertook a war against them. In 264, Rome's legions found the Carthaginians already in possession of Masana, and the First Punic War began. (laughs) Thanks, fellas, thanks. It was really nothing. Now, are there any questions? No? Good. Now, you may open your books and read the next lesson. I have a question, Miss Revere. Hmm. Wouldn't you just know it? What's your question, Percival? Uh, where is Masana? A very good question. Now, as I said before, you may all open your books and study the next lesson. I've already read tomorrow's lesson, Miss Revere. Well, read it again. I ain't playing any favorites. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask a question about the Second Punic War. Oh, the second one? Yes. Uh, well, the first one was a much nicer war, you know. Well, very well, then. Let's discuss the First Punic War. Sure, kid, sure. Uh, the First Punic War, a band of mercenaries who had been dismissed by the tyrant of Syracuse, instead of marching home... Who fought in the First Punic War, Miss Revere? Took possession of the city of Masana, and from this... Who fought? Yes, between exactly what armies, exactly? Exactly what armies, exactly. Uh, um, well, teacher, the First Punic War was between who? Uh, between who? Why, um, between the... Between the pews and the X, naturally. <laughs> but, Miss Revere... I'm sorry, that's all we have time for. Class dismissed. Oh, but, Miss Revere, it's only 10.45. You heard, teacher, Sonny. Class dismissed. Well, 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 Get now. Gee, thanks, Miss I was in a tough spot. I don't know how to thank you. I do. Just say yes. Say yes? To what? Uh, have dinner with you, maybe? Yes, for the rest of your life. Oh, now, wait a minute. I never saw you before. Oh, but I've seen you, darling, in my dreams. And you look even more beautiful than your letters led me to believe. Letters? Oh, then, then you're... Yes, the... Roger, and your admirer. Admirer? That's how you sign all your letters. Ever since your first fan <laughs> letter, you never told me your real name. I uh, will look, Roger, she, I mean... Uh, Don't Mr. talk, Trump, darling. Uh, Don't talk. Just say you'll marry me at once. Oh, uh, but, Roger, you're making a mistake. Yes, yes, a big mistake. By not coming to America sooner and taking you away with me. Uh, well, then I, oh, uh, I never thought teachers of ancient uh, history could be so beautiful, so gorgeous. Oh, uh, so Mr. Roger, Roger, I... Well, now, hold it a minute, Tommy. Go on, Roger. Such gorgeous golden hay. <laughs> Just think in 20 minutes we'll be man and wife. 20 minutes? Oh, well, look, I can't. Can I, Tommy? No, look, mister. Go away, boy, and tell the principal he'll have to get another teacher. Ah, uh, ma chérie, je t'aime. Est-ce que vous m'aimez aussi? Oh, well, uh, say it in English, Roger. I'm afraid I might be saying yes to the wrong question. Look, Miss Revere. Revere. Oh, a beautiful name. But soon it will be changed to Duremi. Mrs. Roger St. Jean to Williger Duremi. I have the justice of the peace waiting at the plane. The plane? Yes, I had to charter my own. Took all my money. 
The pilot is waiting, and I have to get back today in order for both of us to make the boat to France. But she can't marry you. No, it'll be bigger me. Oh, I mean, uh, I took the teacher's place here. Well, they can get another teacher to take your place. I'll get the justice of the peace back here. We'll be married before you can say... Schlump. Schlump? What's a schlump? Exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like something quite unattractive. You guessed it, mister. Well, I've got to rush off now, darling. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Well, Tommy, what now? Gee, I don't get it. What made him think you were her? Well, Aggie probably told him she was the history teacher here. And since you were subbing for her as a teacher, he thought you were Miss Slum. Yeah, and I don't mind subbing for her as a teacher, but expecting me to sub for her as a bride is a little too much. you got to get Aggie, Tommy, and bring her back here fast. But supposing she don't... Well, huh? I mean, he already thinks she's... Huh? Well, I mean, you're beautiful, mm-hmm. and when he sees her... Maybe the beauty parlor didn't... Uh, well, you know. What then? I don't know, Tommy. But Confucius once said that love is blind. Well, we'll soon find out whether Confucius is a liar. Go get Miss Schlump, Tommy. Well, Tommy, where's Aggie? I didn't bring her. She's still under the dryer at the beauty parlor, with her face all covered up with goo. Oh, well, how'd she look? Just like she fell from heaven and landed on her face. Well, did you tell her that her dream boat just docked? Well, I tried to, but they threw me out. Who did? Miss Schlump is also getting a massage all over. And the massage... Uh, thought... Never mind. Gosh, this is a problem. Roger will be back in ten minutes. Judge, ring and license. You ain't thinking of marrying him, are you, Miss Revere? No, but the trouble is, how can I stall the wedding until... That's it, Tommy. What's what? I'll go through the ceremony and stall it long enough for Miss Schlump to get here. But but can you stall becoming Mrs. De Ramey long enough for Schlumpy to get beautiful? I don't know, Tommy. But if I can't, my children are going to have a complete stranger for a father. Well, uh, no point holding things up any longer, Mr. DeRamey. I have other marriage ceremonies to perform, you know. Uh, do you have the rest? Yes, Judge. Here it is. Like it, darling. Well, sure. But but don't you think it's a little too small for my thumb? For your thumb? Yeah. In case I ever hit your ride, I want the fresh guy who picks me up to know I'm married. Uh, well, uh, please, I have five other couples to marry. Uh, hold the bride's hand, please, Mr. DeRamey. Uh, oh, he can't do that. I can't. Why not? Well, after all, I hardly know you. I'll introduce myself after we're married. Go ahead, Judge. Uh, Yes. (coughs) We're gathered here today to witness the marriage of... uh, Your name, please, my dear. Mary Anastasia O'Connor Revere. Uh, To witness the marriage of Mary Anastasia O'Connor Revere... That's after my mother's favorite sister, you know. Yeah, I didn't know. To witness the marriage of... She was a wonderful woman, my aunt. But she was married to an awful fella. Lazy. And very superstitious. Please, Maisie, we don't have all day. No, we don't. Uh, to witness you the marriage... You would have loved my aunt. I doubt it. Uh, to witness the she marriage of then... uh, Mary Anastasia Revere to Roger St. John to Willica de Remy. Wise guy. Please, darling, let's get on with the wedding. Yes, I'm not getting paid by the hour. Uh, do you, Roger, take this woman... Mary uh, Anastasia O'Connor Revere. For your legally... After my mother's favorite sister. Yeah, I know all about it. Uh, for your legally... Oh, did you know my aunt? She knew everybody. She's dead now. Good. Uh, for your she legally... So... I do. He didn't ask the question yet. I knew the question. Oh! So, Roger St. John, her Williger de Ramey, you've been married before. No, thank goodness. Uh, now, if there's anybody well, here... Well, Roger uh, St. John, her Williger de Ramey, if you're going to jump down my throat at a simple little question, maybe we'd better call this whole thing off. Please, please, Maisie, I want to marry you. Yes, so do I. Too late, Judge. Roger saw me first. Oh, please, let me get my two cents into this so-called love match. Uh, before I declare you man and wife, is there anybody present who has any objections? I do. Oh, no. I do. Oh, thank goodness, Miss Schlump. Who is this? Tommy told me he was here, Miss Revere. But he didn't tell me you were marrying my Roger. Your Roger? Uh, I don't understand. But I do. This, this man, crazy female here, wanted to get me out of the way so that she could entice my fiancé away from me. And that's why she sidetracked me to the beauty parlor. Now, now, wait a minute. I didn't. Say, what'd they do to you, man? You're gorgeous. Now, wait a minute. What's coming? Uh, 
Yes. She is gorgeous, isn't she? If he's so fickle that he'll marry the first girl he sees, I never... What? You really think I'm pretty, Roger? Does that answer your question, honey? Look, I've got a little question, too. And Agatha's I... the answer, Roger. She's the one you've been corresponding with. The one you really want to marry, don't you, Roger? Well? 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 Uh, do you mind, Maisie? Oh, not at all. Before I get married, I promise my aunt, Mary Ann... Uh, no, no, to... let's not go through that again. Uh, will you marry me, Miss... Uh, Miss... Uh... Agatha Schlump. Schlump. Oh, that's a beautiful name. And you really love me, Roger. Honey, if he thinks Agatha Schlump is a beautiful name, you know he loves you. Go ahead, Judge. <laughs> we are gathered here today to witness the marriage of, if you'll pardon the expression, Agatha Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Aggie and Roger were married. Aggie made a beautiful bride. That beauty parlor did wonders by her. Brother, I'll bet there was one lemon who never thought she'd wear orange blossoms. But I guess all brides are beautiful. And I hope those two kids will be happy. Not have one of those modern marriages where right after the ceremony, the bride keeps the wedding bouquet and throws away the groom. <laughs> and marriage can last if both persons use a little horse in. After all, marriage is, well like a girdle. It gives a lot, takes a lot, holds people together. Well, I'm on my way again to here, get to this bit of mine. Gosh, my feet hurt. They're wonderful things, mind you. Feet, I mean. But there's only one thing wrong with them. They're built too close to the ground. <laughs> Just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical On the Town, starring Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Betty Garrett, and Ann Miller. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Gerald Moore, Sidney Miller, Frank Nelson, Tommy Bernard, and Elmore Vincent. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>